Hi quilters. Welcome to my little sewing space. Um, I am sharing with you guys um, a little bit about my use of pearl cotton in uh, my quilting. And um, you know, it's funny, it just kind of evolved over time. I started with hand quilting, you know, big stitches because um, I wasn't really great at machine quilting. So, um, you know, it, it was a way for me to manage quilting my own quilts and not struggling on my domestic machine, which, you know, for me seemed a bit overwhelming. And the idea of, you know, hand quilting and working on just a small section at a time and then moving my hoop, it, it just seemed to flow for me. So that's where I got into using pearl cotton. And, um, you know, slowly it evolved into different embroidery stitches. And, you know, one of the things that I really love to do is, um, you know, outline my applique, especially um, if it's a um, needle turn applique or maybe even like something that's English paper pieced, um, you know, things like that. And of course, you know, embroidery stitches um, I love to use and have used on some quilts with um, wool applique. So I'm going to share with you some of my uh, quilts and some of the, um, you know, ways in which I've used pearl cotton in the past. And I'd like to also just, you know, give you a little demo on a couple of things. So, um, you know, that's what I have planned for you and uh, let's get to it. Hi quilters. <laughs> I am getting ready to just give you a little demo on hand quilting. I'm using pearl cotton and big stitches. Um, if I were to be starting a large quilt, I would begin hooping right in the center and I work my way out in both directions and you know around as I go to sort of spread out any wrinkles. Um, you certainly want your backing and your batting to be at least four inches larger than your quilt top because you will find when you get to the edges, you're going to need that extra, you know, to get onto your hoop and be able to finish up, you know, the, the edges of your quilt. The next thing I wanted to talk about is the, um, the supplies that I use for my hand quilting. Now, let's see, I've got these needles, which are um, gold eye chenille needles number 24. And these are uh, my go-to needles. Now, everybody has a different size hand and, um, you know, I find that some um, needles for um, like applique, for example, are just way too small for my hand. 
Um, so I really do believe that, you know, you really have to find the one that's going to suit you best. But if you don't know already what you like, certainly begin with these ones and see how they work for you. They have a nice sharp point, a large eye uh, to accommodate the pearl cotton, and they just, they just work wonderfully for me. So hopefully they work for you as well. And I have this needle threader by Dritz. And let's see, I have one out here, if I can pick it up. Um, <clears throat> and I will show you how I use this to thread my needle. And I don't, I don't always need it, but it certainly comes in handy when I'm tired or my eyes are tired and, um, you know, I just need a little extra help threading. And this is the pearl cotton that I like to use. It's DMC. Um, and I sell this, this bundle in my shop along with the thimble that I'm going to show you. But I wanted to mention that I have actually tried other pearl cotton brands, not all of them, but some of them. And I do find that the DMC holds up better. Um, it doesn't get as fuzzy or start to sort of untwist or fall apart like some of the others do. So I would recommend DMC. Um, and then, of course, this is the, the uh, thimble that I like to use. And also by Clover, the one I'm using is a size medium, but it com they come in small and medium. And they're adjustable, so you don't have to stress too much over the exact size. You can adjust them right here, um, which is one of the features I do really like about this thimble. Also, if you have any fingernail, um, it allows that to, you know, be exposed and not um, kind of stuffed into a small thimble and, um, you know, pushing up against your fingernail. The other thing I love about this thimble is this lip here so it allows you to catch um you know and push that uh, needle through your quilting if you know it gets a little stuck somewhere so um i highly recommend this symbol it's really i've tried a couple others um but if you don't have a thimble of of preference you might want to give this a shot so that is that now i have a needle here and I'm just going to show you how I would go about preparing to um, hand quilt and starting my first stitch. So here's my uh, threader and I'm going to go ahead and put this needle threader right through um, the eye of this needle, which is nice and large. And it's just going to hang there on that little uh, space. I'm going to take my pearl cotton and put it right over that little hook and just hold it tight in my hand like that. And then I'm going to slide um, this right through. And that is all there is to that. So now I've got um, my needle threaded and I wanted to point out the length of this piece of pearl cotton I have. This is probably a little shorter than I would normally use. But um, what I like to do is when I'm pulling from the ball of pearl cotton, I will pull myself a couple of arm lengths, just like this. I'm not yanking my arm way back. I'm just pulling a couple times, which would be a comfortable, you know, pulling of the thread through. So I'm not stressing out my shoulder or... Um, you know, my arm each time I'm yanking it through. But also, the less you pull it through the batting, you know, the less fuzzy it's going to get. So I don't want it to be crazy long and, um, you know, get all um, fuzzy or, you know, start to compromise the strength of it in any way. So that's, uh, this one's probably a little shorter, but I'm gonna tie myself just a small overhand knot um, at the end. If I can get this to stop twisting on me. And, you know, I'm, I want it maybe 
maybe a half inch or so from the end of the, you know, the tail. Okay, so now I am ready to start stitching. And I'm just gonna give you a quick example um, here on my project. But before I do that, um, sometimes if I have some negative space or even if there's a quilt block, um, you know, maybe I have a six inch quilt block um, here, or patchwork block, and maybe I just wanna put a circle around it. Maybe I don't wanna go around all the little squares of the block. So you can use anything you have in your sewing room to trace. So I have these uh, plastic circle templates. Um, what I did for my X here, if I can pick this ruler up, is I just measured, um, I think I did two, four inch, yeah. So I just traced, you know, around this four inch uh, mark in either direction to create this X. Um, the other thing that you can do, you know, if you don't wanna use a marking tool, you can use painter's tape. I use that a lot to just keep myself, you know, on the straight and narrow. Um, I do find if I have a line, I do much better than if I'm just eyeballing it or even, you know, following a line of, um, you know, a quilt block or something. I I just find that it's so much easier if I have, um, you know, a line to guide me. So I'm kind of a fan of that, whether it's a traced line or, um, or you know, working alongside a, a piece of painter's tape. Um, so now I'm ready to get going and I'm going to start quilting right here. So what I want to do is I want to put my needle in maybe, um, maybe, you know, a half inch or so away, certainly, um, a shorter distance than my needle size. Um, so I have enough room to, you know, pull that through now. Um, oops, I'm coming out right on the line and, um, my needle is only going through my quilt top and my batting. So the idea here is that I want my little knot at the end to get lodged into the batting. Um, sometimes people go this way, so you then quilt over, you know, the tail that's left um, as you quilt down this same line, but I just go in any way that seems to work and you know, make sure that I'm picking up um, some batting along the way. All right, so I'm ready to pull this through to start quilting. So I can feel that my knot is stuck in the batting here. And I probably should have given you a better example. Um, I'm just gonna pull it back through. When you start this and you pull so the knot is at the top of your work, you're then going to have to give it a little yank to, you know, pull it all the way through and get it stuck in the batting. And sometimes that feels like a little unnatural. Um, but, you know, once you've done it a couple times, you'll get the hang of it. And also on occasion, it'll come right out, you know, the other side and you just have to begin again until you've got a good grip on the batting. I'm going to pull this tail out just a little bit and give it a snip and then I'm going to pull it back in so it's gone and then I just usually run my fingernail over the little hole um, and I'm ready to get started. So I'm just going to show you the basic stitch and um, you know the whole idea behind this is everybody's stitch is going to be a different length. You know this is hand quilting everybody's you know signature is different your hand quilting is going to be different and the more you quilt, the smaller your stitches are going to get, um, you know, just from practice. So I just want you to keep that in mind. And the idea is more to um, keep your stitches the same length, you know, as much as possible. It doesn't matter if yours are a little bigger than somebody else's or, you know, vice versa. You just want to try for some consistency. Um, now, 
I don't know if you can see this, but I have a row here of light blue stitches, which blends into the background. I also have some white that, you know, also blends in quite nice. And then I have this, you know, navy, which I'm working with today. So you can choose colors to blend in, you know, if you're beginning and you're not that, um, you know, comfortable letting all your stitches stand out quite so much. Um, or you can go bold and I like to use, you know, actually a lot of different colors when I'm hand quilting. I just think it adds to the fun. Um, anyway, so let's get started here. So my first stitch, um, what I need to do is have my needle straight up and down. So I've got it stuck in my project. It's going straight down and I can feel it. I can feel the tip of it with my other finger behind my work. Now, once I feel that it's come through, I'm going to go ahead and tip my needle back. And if you can see, I'm pushing down with my thumb and I'm pushing up with my finger on my left hand to create a bump to go ahead and push my needle through. So that is really, you know, the biggest trick here to be thinking about. Um, I've got it balanced on my finger. And as soon as I feel it go through, I'm going to, you know, tip my needle and push it through while I'm pushing, you know, up on the back of my work here. So I'm going to go ahead and take another stitch. So again, needle straight up and down. As soon as you feel it come through, you're going to tip it and I'm creating a little bump by pushing up with my back finger and pushing down with my thumb. And, you know, once you get the hang of this, it's going to go relatively quickly. Um, another thing to note while I'm doing this is I've got my hoop um, anchored up here and that way it's not like really getting tangled in my thread that's dangling on this side. So, you know, depending on if you're right or left-handed, you want this to be, you know, away from where your um, uh, dominant hand, I guess, is working. So um, just another thought when you're getting your project ready. Now I'm working along and, um, you know, taking stitches here and you can see, you know, that it's really nice to have this lip. I'm not struggling at all to get this needle through my work. You know, I'm going through three layers here and, you know, without any difficulty. So I'm gonna continue along. And once you're warmed up and, um, you know, feeling a little more confident, you can certainly take a couple of stitches at a time. Like sometimes I take three or four um, and you do that by, you know, the same method. You begin, um, you know, with your needle standing up and now I'm going to rock it. I'm gonna push it through just about as much as I want, um, you know, the space be um, or my, my next stitch to be. And then I just keep rocking it back and forth like this and you know take a couple of stitches at a time and this is when you're really you know cooking with gas and <laughs> moving along quite nicely um you know the other thing too is you want to you know change needles on occasion you don't need to use the same needle for the entire project and you'll find that after a while you know it'll get a little drag to it so you know, keep that in mind, um, you know, to switch up your needle. And I'm gonna do a couple more stitches. And then, um, whoops. And then I'm just gonna show you how to tie off. <clears throat> All right, so I've come to, you know, the end of my work wherever I'm working and I want to um, tie this thread off. Now I could tie it off making one more stitch or I could tie it off where this would be the end of um, 
you know, my, my stitching. So the idea here is to take an overhand knot like this, and I want that knot to be as close to my work as possible, so I'm just gonna hold my finger on it and try to bring it right down to the, the top of my work there. And then I'm gonna hold it out to the side and put my needle back down into the hole that it came out of and travel again through the batting, come out off to the side and I'm gonna pull that right through. And now it's knotted off and I can go ahead and trim that off quite nicely. And that is how you do the big stitch hand quilting um, technique. And you know, it's easy enough. And quite frankly, it will go much faster than you can imagine. Um, the other thing, too, is when you're selecting your batting, um, I'm using a cotton batting. Um, you know, you want to make sure that you're using something for hand quilting. You don't want to be pulling up fibers um, from your batting through, you know, your quilt top, which is called bearding, you know, little fibers sticking out everywhere. Um, you can use a wool batting. You could use a cotton poly blend, like an 80-20. Um, but just, you know, check the package instructions or talk to somebody at your local quilt shop for recommendations. Um, I'm using Warm and Natural from the Warm Company um, for mine. Um, but, you know, I don't always use the same thing. And sometimes I want something with a little more fluff to it, you know, that has a little bit of poly in it. So it really depends on your quilting project. Um, so, you know, just choose accordingly. And I think that's it. So, um, you know, I hope you enjoyed this little demo and you are willing to give it a go yourself. And, um, you know, if you have any questions, please let me know and I will try to answer any that you have. Okay, so I wanted to give you a little um, example of an applique project that I'm planning on using some pearl cotton in. And um, this is a project that I'm working on, actually, whoops, for my daughter. And it's going to say skin um, because she works as an esthetician and, um, I'm making a little uh, case for some of her tools, and I thought this would be fun. She's been waiting very patiently for it. <laughs> so I figured it's about time I get around to it. And I have the S here that I have 
um, not finished um, prepping yet because I wanted to show you. Now, <clears throat> you'll see that my, my S is reversed. I've got it traced onto a piece of heat and bond light, which is the fusible that I like to use for wool applique. I use um, Steam Seam Light 2 for my machine applique, and those are just the two products that I find work the best. So I have a little piece of wool here. Um, wool is, you know, a little on the expensive side if you're buying large pieces of it, but small pieces aren't too bad. And another product that I have an example of here, this is a, um, a wool felt blend, much less expensive, and it comes in sheets, um, you know, like almost like the craft felt. Um, so this is another option for you, you know, if um, you don't want to invest in some wool. But I have this piece, it's a little different color than the rest of my letters. So I've got my, um, my uh, S traced out in reverse, and I'm gonna go ahead and, um, I don't know if my iron is hot enough yet, but I'm gonna go ahead and fuse this um, to my wool. Okay, so I've got my S cut out and I'm actually make sure my iron is still heating up here. I'm going to go ahead and peel the paper off the back. Um, I should probably mention one of the things that I like best about this um, fusible is that it is easy to get my needle through. It's not too gummy. It's on the lighter side. And so my idea is I'm going to applique these little guys below. So I want to make sure that everything, I'm going to center it on this K. And I think that looks pretty good there. So I'm going to go ahead and fuse this in place. So this is going to be my um, starting point. I think what I'm gonna do is just stitch around these three letters using something that's a little bit lighter, more the color of my S, to help this pop up a little bit um, and you know define it and outline it. I think a lighter color against this background will look nice. So I'm gonna go with that. Um, and then for the S, um, maybe I'll go with this orange or even this cream. So I'm gonna do uh, a few of the more fancy stitches around the S and some just basic back stitching around the rest of the letters. And then I think what I'm gonna do is maybe do a little uh, woven, whipped woven circle in each of these little spots. And I could even, if I wanted to do a little circle here over the eye, you know, to dot the eye, um, but we'll see how that goes. And then I'll probably also do something with my hexagons here. But um, the first thing I need to do is get my S applique down. And for wool applique, I do like to use wool thread. Um, so I am using this uh, wool thread and I'm gonna use my, um, the same clover chenille needle just because it's easy for me to thread and, um, you know, it works quite nicely through, um, you know, the layers, it's very sharp. Me. everything is appliqued in place and you know this could frankly be complete right now 
So um, I would like to show you, so this th consider this our hour before, and then we're gonna add all our stitching and see how it comes out after. And it doesn't have to be anything crazy, you know, it can be something simple and, you know, just a little addition of, um, you know, some handwork can really, um, you know, bring this to life in my mind. So I think what I'm gonna do is just begin by back stitching around all my um, smaller letters here. And I think I'll do the fancier stitches on the S and add a couple things um, here and there on my, my other letters. Okay, I've got my pearl cotton coming up from the back of my work and I've just picked a place, any place really to begin. And I'm gonna begin um, and, you know, with the back stitch. So I'm gonna um, come out maybe an eighth of an inch from where, or go down an eighth of an inch where my pearl cotton comes out and take a little stitch. So now I've got one stitch here and then a space which my back stitch will go into. So I'm going to just continue in this fashion, trying not to make my stitches too big and also, you know, trying to keep them somewhat uniform. And, you know, you can already see it's um, a little lighter in color and I'm actually kind of excited about how this is gonna look. All right, so I did my K and I wanted to pause and just show you because I'm getting excited about it now. And um, I think what I'm gonna do is go on to show you a couple of the stitches and then uh, finish up some of my back stitching. So I'm gonna do a whipped woven circle on my N. And I am going to use this um, milliner's needle and I really need to find uh, the packet to show you. Okay, so I'm using, um, I mean, the brand doesn't really matter, but th this happens to be Richard Hemming and Son, um, and they are milliner's needles size one. Um, and we're going to use that for a couple stitches today. So let me get myself situated here. All right, the first thing I'm going to do, now I'm going to imagine that this is you know, a full circle here. And I'm gonna come up from um, maybe the top here. Right in this corner. And I wanna go down into the center. And what I'm creating here is um, some spokes. So almost like, you know, uh, how you'd slice a pizza. And every stitch is gonna go right down into the center. Okay, I've got my little spokes in place. And, you know, my thread is at the back of my work. So I need to bring it up. And I wanna bring it up uh, right in between, um, you know, one of these little uh, wedges um, right at the point. Doesn't really matter where. Okay, now I'm going to use the blunt end of my needle, which is uh, what these needles are great for. So nice and long. And I've got uh, my thread coming out at the point of this wedge. And what I want to do is go under uh, both of these spokes on the left and right um, side of the same wedge that this little um, pearl cotton is coming out of. So I'm going to go under two 
and I'm going to just pull it up and it's going to create just a little, you know, wrap on that, um, that one spoke. And now my thread is coming out in the next little uh, section and I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm working my way around And I'm, I'm snugging this up, you know, pulling it up towards the center as I go. It's not looking like much at the moment. Now I'm in this next wedge, so I'm gonna take those two sides. Pull it up to the center, you know, snug it. Don't yank and tighten it so much that uh, the effect goes away. And I'm just going to work like this for a minute. Okay, I just want to pause here for a minute and just show you how this is coming out. Um, you know, you can start start to see some definition. And again, you know, I've got this, this thread coming out of this um, little pie here. <laughs> and I'm going to just continue my way around. I think I'm at a good stopping point now. Um, I could continue going and really fill all of this in, but I, I'm kind of liking that uh, the wool shows right around the edges, so I'm gonna leave it here. And I'm just going to, uh, it's coming out in this uh, wedge here. I'm just going to take it down to the back of my work and um, you know, tie it off. I'm going just over that one little thread, but really anywhere you can bring that down. That makes sense. And then I'm going to just catch one of these threads and make myself a knot. There we go. Okay, so that is the whipped woven circle and it's looking adorable. So I'll probably do another one here on the K. Um, but before I do that, um, I think I'm going to start on my S. Okay, so I've actually skipped ahead a little bit and Everything is pretty much backstitched. I have a space around the eye and a little space over this arc here on the N. And my plan is to add um, some embroidery stitches there. And I'm also going to add a little bit to my S. Um, and I've gone ahead and just backstitched around my little hexagons using um, a color that matches the background and I like that because I really want the word to be my focal point and you know I didn't want to distract too much from it so I wanted this to be subtle um, and um, you know skin to be you know, the star of the show here. So I'm gonna go ahead now and show you how to do the Pekingese stitch, which I think you're going to really love. It's, um, you know, a simple stitch. It's actually, we're, we're really just weaving this thread through the back stitch. Okay, so for the Pekingese stitch, um, I'd like to add it just to a little section here and then maybe over on this side. So I'm gonna come up from the back of my work and my thread is knotted. I'm gonna come up here and I'm using two different colors. So you could use the same color, you know, pearl cotton that you used to back stitch, or you can use two different colors, whatever your preference is. So I've come up um, just in front of one of my back stitches. So I'm actually just going to bring this to the back of the stitch. So what we're going to do is we're going to count two stitches to the left, one, two, and we're going to come down through that stitch. And I'm using the blunt end of my needle 
to um, just um, feed that through. And I'm going to leave it till I have a little bit of a loop. Okay, so I've gone two to the left and now I'm going to come back one to the right and pick up that back stitch and go over this little loop. And I'm just going to pull it. I don't want it like super tight, but just tight enough, um, you know, just snugged up so it's not hanging out there. Get my fingers untangled here. <clears throat> All right. So now I'm coming out here um, and I'm going to again count two from where I've come out. Okay, so I'm just trying to keep this from twisting. So now I'm going to go back one to the right and pick up that going from the bottom to the top. Oops, one, two, down, and one back, over. And you can already see a bit of a lacy effect showing up here. And I'm just gonna, I'm really just eyeballing it to see when I feel as though I've got enough um, stitches that I like the effect of it. Okay, so <laughs> I got a little carried away. Um, so I've got some um, Pekingi stitching on the top here, around this edge, and right in here, and I think it just highlights it quite nicely. I'll hold it up so maybe you can see it a little better. Um, but I'm I'm quite pleased with the results. So that is the Pekingi stitch, and um, what I'm going to do next is these little bouillon knots and I guess I'm going to use the same color that I've backstitched with here. Preparing to begin these um, bouillon knots and I am going to start um, about a quarter inch away from um, my backstitching here because I'm going to need to take, to take a large backstitch. So I've come up from the back of my work and I'm going to go ahead and take a back stitch coming out right where, um, you know, my original thread is exiting from the back. So I've done my back stitch. I'm going to keep the needle in my work and push it up a little bit. And now I'm going to take the end of this uh, pearl cotton that's coming out, my original exit point, and I'm going to, actually I'm going to wrap it clockwise, and I'm going to continue to wrap it until I think I've got enough wraps to fill this space here. I've got about 12 wraps. So, and it's looking slightly longer than my space, which is okay because the longer you go, if you go over, it'll actually create a little bump for you. So I'm gonna stop there and just see how I like this. So I'm gonna put my thumb over these wraps to hold it in place. And then I'm going to pull my needle through. And just carefully, you know, don't go too quickly. So you don't have a, a lot of um, any knots. And this is what it's going to look like when you pick your thumb up. And now I'm going to still hold it, but I'm pulling this thread all the way back tight. Okay, so now my thread is coming out where my back stitch went in. And I'm just going to push it with my fingernail and hold this to the side and I'm going to go back in, whoops, I'm going to go back into my work here 
and I want to take my needle all the way up another quarter inch ahead of that last knot because my next knot is going to go in this space. Okay. <clears throat> and you know, just snug that up. And now I'm going to go ahead and create another one. So another back stitch coming out at my original exit point here where my thread's coming out. Wrap it. doing the same number of wraps hold my thumb over it pull my whoopsie pull my needle through I think I made my wraps a little too snug there and that's why I got caught up give it a little pull sometimes you know you have to finesse it a little bit And snug it up as best I can and now I'm gonna go back down into my work there and I'm gonna come out right at the point of my uh, at the top of my eye here my letter okay and I'm just gonna keep repeating this process so oh, I have finished my little knots and I decided I was going to leave this alone with just back stitching because I have these whipped woven circles and I am loving where this is at. I really don't feel like it needs much more. Um, I wonder, I mean, I may add a little dot to my eye and then do these little knots around it um so that's th that might be it i might do that and and be done but um, one thing that i wanted to point out is um when you see a lot of wool work and wool applique a lot of times they they are stitched in place using a blanket stitch and maybe some embroidery floss um, or even pearl cotton maybe but um, when you applique your wool in place using a coordinating, you know, preferably wool thread, it gives it a much cleaner look. And then you can go ahead and, you know, do some different embroidery stitches around the work. So just keep that in mind if you like the clean look of it. Um, then, you know, try to coordinate your thread and um, have fun, you know, embellishing it with um, some embroidery stitches. So that is that, and I think you would you would have to agree that this is, you know, a lot nicer than the original with no stitching. So you know, think about adding some things, and I hope you're inspired to add some you know stitching to your quilts here and there it doesn't have to be a lot sometimes just a little bit is all you need and um you know thank you for joining me